Good morning and welcome to the online service of Zion Lutheran Church here in Mondovi. Today we celebrate God's gift of Palm Sunday, a day when we remember how crowds of Jesus' disciples followed him to Jerusalem at the beginning of Holy Week, and they acclaimed him as the son of David and the one whom they hoped and believed would be their king. Today, as Palm Sunday begins this Holy Week, we follow Jesus, knowing that he is our king, king of our hearts, king of the universe, and we call on him to save us now and deliver his people, his church, and his world. At the end of this service, I'll not uh, proclaim a traditional benediction. Uh, the invitation is, uh, following the service, from 10, 15 a.m. to 12, 30 p.m., we'll be offering, I, along with an elder and a member of the Ladies Society, uh, palms to go. Uh, you may drive to Zion, come in the, the inside of the parking lot, uh, and come around over by the church. Uh, you may choose to open uh, the trunk of your car where uh, we can place a palm and Easter balloons there for you. Uh, and if you want to crack your window just a little bit, I will, from a distance, proclaim God's blessing, his benediction, uh, and his gifts for you and your family for this Holy Week. Our worship today begins with hymn number 442.
The order of service is divine service setting three, beginning on page 184 in the Lutheran service book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto one another, and before God, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce his grace to you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro from Psalm 118. Open to me, O Lord, the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city. Grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again, may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord has given me a tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2. Here, St. Paul writes, Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and, he, and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see, you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever, loses, lo whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. 
And where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, Jesus continued. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. We join in confessing the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 443.
with heart and life and voice, and in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, peace, and mercy are yours this Palm Sunday. From God your Father in heaven and his triumphant Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Parades are one of our favorite things to do. We love seeing the community out and about. And we love seeing uh, all the people who participate to make our society work. The firefighters, the police, the Girl Scouts, the bands. We like the mounted posse on their horses. We wonder if there's going to be candy. Sometimes churches have a float in the parade. And oftentimes we see politicians seeking re-election. That said, I doubt there will be many parades happening this spring. And that's sad. What I've always loved even more than secular parades are church processions. Some of my earliest memories are as a young child, gathering in the narthex with the other Sunday school kids, rounded up by our teachers to walk into ch church following the pastor, singing the song we had been practicing, all glory, laud, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas bring. I love processions, whether it's Palm Sunday or the Christmas program. Psalm 42 comes to mind. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Church parades, gathering as the people of God, this is one of my favorite things. Therefore, it is heart-wrenching to see that on this day of Palm Sunday, for the first time in my life, there's no children. There's uh, people, but we're scattered abroad and we have to tune in digitally from afar. There's no parade, no procession. It's hard to comprehend. It's hard to understand what has happened to our society, our community, our planet, and it happened so quickly. I'm in shock. How are you doing? Are you overwhelmed, confused, dazed? Are you hurting? If so, then the scriptures give you and me today a perfect prayer. Hosanna. One word, one Hebrew word, an emphatic, urgent word of prayer. Save us now. Help now, O oh God. At the first Palm Sunday parade, the procession, St. John's Gospel tells us that not even the disciples understood what was happening to their world. They didn't understand what Jesus was doing. But they did know, they did feel that they needed help. They had many needs of body and soul that they couldn't solve on their own. So because they felt this great need, and because they saw the fulfillment of the scriptures in Jesus, they cried out, Hosanna! Brothers and sisters, if you do anything today, I hope it's simply saying this short prayer. Hosanna, Lord! Save me now. Save me from my selfish thinking. Save me from the imperfect decisions I make every day. Save me from my worry. 
save me from my guilt. Hosanna. Here's the good news. Here's the joy. Your God has heard your prayer and he's answered your deepest needs by sending his son Jesus. Not to lecture us from a capital afar. Not to cast judgment on us and tell us we should have done better. No, the Son of God came to do the difficult and excruciating work of saving us. And this work was symbolized on the first Palm Sunday by his vehicle. Jesus entered the holy city Jerusalem, not on a powerful war horse or race horse, not in a chariot, but he came on a donkey, on a beast of burden. In today's terms, we'd say it was a truck, a plain, powerful, tough, working pickup truck. Jesus came not to draw attention to himself. He came not to be admired or served by men, but he came to serve, to work, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And in this way, Jesus is simply far greater than any of the princes or leaders of this world, this leader included. That first Palm Sunday parade, it was strange. There was one float. There was one thing to see, and yet that one thing was enough. That one person, that one man, that plain man on that plain donkey coming into Jerusalem, by his word had drawn many followers. But it was strange because he came into, the, into Jerusalem reminiscent of King David who also rode a donkey and King Solomon who also rode a donkey. But he had no army, no drums, and there were also gathered along with his crowd of followers many critics, powerful critics. And it was these critics that helped direct the parade in what seemed like a very wrong turn. For in the course of that week, Jesus was stripped of his donkey, stripped of his clothes and all his decoration. He was deserted by all of his followers. Jesus was stripped of any trapping of worldly glory or power. By the end of the week, Jesus was horrifically driven out of town and nailed to the torturous cross and lifted up so that he could die. And that's it. That's what Jesus is talking about in the gospel when he says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. A more interesting, faithful translation of that word would be drag. When I am lifted up on the cross, Jesus says, I will drag all people to myself. It is as if he took that powerful 4x4 four four pickup truck and hitched it to our lonely float, going nowhere. He joined his life and his love to our death and our sorrow, and he lifted, he dragged us up out of the pit, out of our death. Hosanna! The cross is the answer to that prayer. And today and throughout this week, we marvel that in our world, in our history, God came 1,000 987 years ago, approximately, God came in His Son, Jesus. He came to deal with our problems, to deal with our sins and our guilt and our shame and our failure to understand. In our world, the sinless Son of God came to die on a cross willingly. 
And it was a beautiful event. Beautiful. Because by his love, by his death, by his sorrow, he won our redemption, our freedom, our peace. And that story, the story of Jesus, the story of his passion, that culminates in his victory on Easter, that is the best story the world has ever heard. Far better than any fiction. And so this week, while we undergo social isolation, we won't devote ourselves to binging on Netflix, but we will take this time to read God's Word, to study the Gospel story, to study the Passion. As we're able, we will tune in via YouTube. As we're able, we will call our fellow Christians and see how they're doing. As we're able, we will grow as families in our Christian devotion. No. No, this Holy Week, this Easter won't be the same. It won't be like normal. And it won't be fun. But, dear Christian, I want to encourage you to know that you are living in the midst of salvation history. Just as God led the Israelites out of Egypt through a perilous journey, and He brought them salvation, just as God called His people Israel out of exile in Babylon and brought them home to Israel. Just as God was with His disciples as they witnessed their place of worship, the temple in 70 AD, crumble, torn to the ground by the Romans. God reminded His people that wherever two or three were gathered, He was with them in Jesus so too, dear Christians, as we witness this calamity upon our world, we know that God is near in His Son Jesus through His Word and through His promise. You are living in salvation history. Hosanna! There is an end to this. God will save you and me and His church and His world. This is a hard time. But when it's over, and we're already starting to plan for it, when it's over, we're going to have a parade, a procession. And we're going to have all the kids and all the adults of this congregation gathered together, praising God. We're going to have a feast. And we're going to give thanks for the redemption that is ours and the gifts of Forgiveness, life, salvation, community, and joy. And in the light of the resurrection, that day will be beautiful. Just as Psalm 42 says, Why are you cast down, my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and families and lives and souls in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the offertory found in our hymnal on page 192. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of
gracious Lord, we come before you this day as a church that has been scattered throughout the world. We know and believe that your will for the world is good, even though at many times it is hidden from us. On this day, we pray for your people throughout the world, that we may endure the assaults of the evil one, sickness and death, and yet remain faithful for the sake of your Son, who has promised us all things, even your heavenly kingdom, and pledged it to us by his own blood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as a church and promised that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the vocations you have called us to serve in our church, in our home, and in our community. Grant to us every gift and blessing needful that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. Even when that means, O oh Lord, that we have to stay in. As we're, uh, many of us are called to be safer at home, grant us patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, you have established earthly government for our good, and you hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of the United States Congress, the governor of Wisconsin, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve you nobly and your people wisely pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens of our nation. Grant them wisdom and strength to bring this nation and indeed all the world out of the coronavirus crisis and back to stability according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your grace is made perfect in weakness. Your grace is sufficient for all our needs. And you have promised in grace to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of the disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of all those who are suffering during this pandemic. We pray especially for the aged and the shut-ins of this congregation. We pray for Ruth, Valona, Richard, Dennis, and many more that we name in our hearts. Grant us, O Lord, and teach us to pray at all times for these, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, your word has made it clear that you desire all to be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Bless the ministry of your word during this time. Give it success. Deliver us from error so that we may serve all those who live in darkness and fear and that through the speaking of your good news, many would walk in the light of the Lord Jesus and have confidence for the trials of this world and hope for the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you give daily bread to all those who hungry, and your daily, meat, daily bread provides all our needs in this mortal life. Grant us grace, grateful hearts and the knowledge to receive that daily bread with thanksgiving. Bless those who make, prepare, and deliver this bread, which includes all that we need for this body and life. Most especially, we pray for your presence 
with those medical professionals who serve uh, in harm's way and serve those who are most impacted and afflicted by the coronavirus disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, as your son was welcomed into Jerusalem with palms and hosannas, help us welcome him today into our hearts. Look with kindness upon all who have been separated from this holy communion by government orders and by the necessities of this uh, pestilence upon our land. We pray that you would comfort our flock with your promises, especially those that make it clear that you are never distant from the mystical body of your Son that is the communion of saints, the believers, in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, it is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who during this most holy week accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose there at Golgotha, life might also rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name this day, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen bless we the lord thanks be to god we close our worship with hymn number 441. Mm -hmm. 